John, can you, um, zooming out, can you just tell me a bit about your work specifically at Meta and what Meta does with augmented reality? So we <laughs> um, developed a headset that you put on mm -hmm. and um, you're fully immersed, uh, 90 degree field of view, and you could see holograms and you could move them around. And we're excited as you go from desktop, laptop, mobile, we think the next interface with technology is going to be augmented reality, where you see the, the physical world and you get digital information on it. And um, in terms of productivity, collaboration, manufacturing, there are a ton of opportunities. And the world has sort of been, uh, I think, captivated by virtual reality, where yeah. you have a screen in front of you and you're taken to another place. And that's really cool, mm -hmm. but I think it's augmented reality that's going to have more of an impact for the, the types of people that are coming here and that eventually virtual reality is going to be a feature of a device that's going to allow you to switch back and forth between yeah. augmented and um, a virtual reality. And I think it's a really exciting time uh, and we've been kind of held hostage by rectangles or by keyboards and right. the keyboard is defined by how movable type was put. So a movable typist could take a letter and know exactly what letter they got because they're so small. And, mm -hmm. and when they created the typewriter, they actually moved the keys to be inefficient so they didn't jam. And that's how we communicate with computers. And yeah. yet our mm -hmm. eye can take in 10 to the eighth bits per second of information. Mm -hmm. And so let's think through neuroscience and, and how the eye works to really create an interface that uh, is smart. The other factor that's converging is that AI, or I like to call it EI, extended intelligence, artificial intelligence. Yeah, and, no, and, I love that, extended intelligence, yeah. yeah. And that as you create a headset or a strip of glass or even a mobile device where you can get digital information on the physical world, using AI to inform you on what you're looking at mm -hmm. and, and how to handle the information so it becomes more of an extension of you, not something you're subservient to. Yeah, I think um, virtual reality does have a lot of limitations and augmented or mixed reality opens up so much also that's very powerful here. Um, can you talk a bit about um, how augmented reality is impacting the world of design? Just last week at Dell World, uh, Nike produced a video using the Meta headset. Mm -hmm. And it had a number of employees designing a sneaker. So people that weren't located in the same place had the headset on and were manipulating uh, a sneaker. They were designing uh, the color, the the form factor. Mm -hmm. um, and so people who are not co-located could work together simultaneously. And instead of using a 2D screen, they're looking at the object in 3D. Mm -hmm. Instead of um, using a typewriter keyboard or a mouse, they're using their hands to manipulate yeah. the, uh, the, the object. And so I think, um, you know, a, as humans, we're very creative. We have a lot of yes. ideas. And this is just a great tool to be able to, to work with. And the fact that you could see the world as you're designing, and then you get this digital information means that you could do it for an extended period of time. Yeah. So while um, VR can take you somewhere, you're not gonna wanna be there for 24 hours. You're not gonna wanna be there for a long part of the day. And uh, designers who wanna design things, whether it's a, a part for uh, uh, you know aerospace or a Nike sneaker, uh, this is something that they could do for an extended amount of time. Mm -hmm. And so it, it literally augments their current reality instead of having yep. to pull them out of it. Yep. Um, and so augmented reality is definitely still a, a pretty new technology. Where do you think we might be in five to ten years with it? Or what roadblocks might we need to um, pass to get to that next level? Yep. So augmented reality is pretty new in some ways. It's also not so new in other ways. Uh, L. Frank Baum, who wrote The Wizard of Oz, mm -hmm. before he wrote The Wizard of Oz, wrote a book that referenced a form of augmented reality. Uh, a few miles from here, Ivan Sutherland in 1968 at Harvard wanted to see a teapot, three-dimensional. Mm -hmm. And uh, he created a device called the Swords of Damocles to be able to see it. And it wasn't that he was out to create the Swords of Damocles, it was that he just wanted to see this teapot that he could see right in front of him. That ended up becoming the basis of the Pixar uh, business. Mm -hmm. And um, I think the military with heads up displays that, that fighter jet pilots wear, uh, or today if you get in a Boeing 787, uh, as they're flying, there's less dials around, there's screens that, that, that help, uh, help people uh, get around. 
So what's interesting about augmented reality is a lot of the technologies that roll up into it, imaging, mm -hmm. the computer vision, um, the uh, Moore's Law, the chip, mm -hmm. the cloud, like all these technologies are maturing. They're maturing and so yeah. if you add them all together, you can create a device that's pretty robust. It's that we haven't come up with the use cases. We haven't come up with the killer yeah. apps for them. So to say that this is new technology, it's actually technology that's been around and that is ready. Mm -hmm. And it's really what our imaginations can come up with, uh, you know, what we what we can do with it. Yeah, when you talk about um, the applications, I think definitely there's been discussion of VR and AR, where are we with hype versus reality. Um, and so I think it'll be interesting in the coming years to see what concrete applications are developed. So the last question I wanted to ask you is, there are some, um, misconceptions around augmented reality. There's been some scary science fiction films created about you know people thinking that their reality is actually one that is in an augmented reality application. What do you think like are some of the common misconceptions um, within this technology? Yeah, no, good, good question. Um, I, I mean, there are a lot of science fiction novels around the dystopian future right. and uh, augmented reality technologies in that. I think. In terms of being confused with is this real, is this not, I think it's more virtual reality. I mm -hmm. think there are ways that, that augmented reality can play a role with that. Uh, but I think augmented reality, we're more in the driver's seat. Yeah. And you know, here we are at a uh, uh, summit that's bringing together manufacturers. And they want to think about design, manufacturing, safety, repair, and how we can use tools to help, um, help be more efficient, help increase cycle time help uh, make things safer. To me, I think, let's figure out some use cases in an industry uh, and show what this is and have this technology be defined about what it can do as opposed to being defined by you know, bad things. Um, yeah. So I'm excited for that future. Definitely, I think that focus on like what the technology can do is so much more yep. applicable and vital. Um, John, thank you so much for coming up here and talking with us on the Singularity yep. great, stage. Great, yeah, love and Singularity. Singularity is great. <laughs> You hear it from yep, him, I didn't yep, make no, him say that. No, it's really that. cool. <laughs>